Yeah. Yeah. The base of the Colombian culture will come from the Afro and indigenous mix, um, and how the black woman becomes the spinal cord of the Colombian culture. Um, my investigation has brought me from like the whole coast of the Caribbean to the Pacific of Colombia, where are the main um, uh, population of black uh, Colombians. We are part of like 50 percent. Uh, a population of Colombia, but we don't represent not even the one percent of the richness of of, uh, of Colombia, and we have been forgotten by the government. Usually, my my the um the territory where my family lives or where they used to live was Manavinguda. That is one of like the highest rates uh, of um how do you say mafia mafia or, or and corruption that, ha that has in Colombia. And a lot of my investigation has come with like um, anth anth anthologies of my grandmother and my grandfather and obviously my mother too. A lot of them uh, are remembrance of like what I suffered when I was growing up and self-identified with my blackness and how how living in a white bubble that it was Bogota, the center of the cap and the capital of the city of Colombia, sorry. Um, uh, damage my identification with blackness and also damage my representation, not only making uh, an emotional and mental damage, but also making a physical damage, starting to harm my own body to become what it was the European vision of the real beauty. Um, so yeah, starting with this one, this one is really close to my heart because it's um portrait of my grandma. My grandma has been working um, since she was little in crop fields, like bananas, like peas. Uh, there's a really strong um, growth of roses and also, I don't remember the last one. Como se dice? No es mamoncillo, el amarillo que se come con sal. No, I don't remember. Chantaduro. Chantaduro is like a, it's a traditional uh, fruit from Colombia. Chantajar. Chantajar, maybe it will be the translation. I don't think so. But if you have the opportunity to try one, maybe you will have an experience. For me, I don't like it too much. It's too, I don't know, it's supposed to be a fruit, it's supposed to be a vegetable. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so this one, uh, it was in, through a conversation with my grandmother and how like she has been living, like working with her body and how she suffers a lot, like, you know, like by her hips, her hands, the, oh, they're always in like, she's always like in this sofa, but she, but for her, she has accepted that this is the way of her to live. And as I am um, a mixed race baby, um, she always has this fascination to my, my dad, that is a Spanish um, man, saying that he's looking at him as a savior and, and someone that like helped us family to get better, to get improved. So when I had this conversation, uh, I wanted to let her know like the, the value of her work of the this of the waste of her body into food food preparation that doesn't give her them the the, the rights of labor that giving them uh good medical assistance good uh, I don't know like security insurance for like their kids their have the family their homes so uh this this is the reproduction in a small or if they want to want to take it home uh, it, in reality, it's almost like one meter times 160. And it, it says, La sazón de tu comida la trae en mis manos. It translates like, to the, flav the flavor of your food is brought by my hands. So yeah, this one is that one. Uh, obviously, I, 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 I over-exaggerated her hands because that's where, like, the pain, where the pain is, is stronger for my grandmother. And because I have this strong memory of always she, I don't know, this garbando, I don't know how to say it, but like taking out of the vein the peas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is why I did the, this, this image of her. This is still alone, she's really ex excited woman, so don't feel bad about her. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this one, a small one. I 
present to the camera. Um, this one was also uh, a guerrilla poster that I made due to one of the incidents that happened after the manifestations of the Paro Nacional in Colombia. So the story goes, the story goes, the, the action goes well, was that a little um, Wayu kid, um, that would be a tribe that uh, lives in La Guajira, it would be the north side of Colombia, close to the border with uh, Venezuela, was raped by seven army men from Colombia, and what we did with the group of community in Colombia is that we paced the whole ent entrance of the embassy with this image that it says we are angry and also have the images of like the the, the blood of, of like the violation in her in her womb. Um, I try to to always produce like um, a vision of like the the women body as a movement so that's why it will not come as a solid as a solid images and i try to always use a lot of typography and to talk a lot obviously i, I have changed to 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 a lot of use of english due to my base in london but i really appreciate when i when i try to face a lot of um, my posters in spanish i think that it's 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 like closer to my heart and also closer to what I can relate. Um, this one, um, it's about um, it, the sexualization that I suffer when I was growing up. So uh, as a black as black women, we tend to be sexualized really young. So we tend, in, in Colombia, first of all, it's not like London. I think there, is, there has been like a, already an education how to treat women about cat calling and how to pursue, pursue, I don't know, a woman's attention. In Colombia, obviously that hasn't been like the normal now. The normal is to get cat calling all the time. You you come to London and then you realize like, oh, no one has cat called me for a while. What is going on? I'm, am I ugly? Like that kind of like mentality is all already embedded in our brains. That it's so weird when you come here, it's just like, Maybe I'm not beautiful enough. You know, like it really harms with your mentality. And so when I was growing up, I was in between of being like a black girl that it was not beautiful enough, but it was beautiful enough to be sexual assault. Mm -hmm. So so my my full growth was like focusing to sexuality and how can I become beautiful doing it, doing more um like underlining my exotism, you know, about being black, how like I could be more black to be more beautiful, but not enough. It was worth, it was walking in down that balance, that, that line of like, maybe I can get more attention if I behave in this way of the blackness that people are imagining because of like what they can see in the TV or what they can see in like, I don't know, folklore. And, and obviously I got really like a lot of like violence or aggression against my own body so this one is um I, it's a portrait of me when I was little but I am wearing like a wedding dress um and in you, you can see that it has a typography that it says no so exotica um you can understand by like by its translation that it would say I'm not exotic yeah Oh, yeah. So this one, this one um, is, is a, is, it goes a, lot, a little bit, if you want to, it, this one goes a little bit um, through the identification of like when I decided of like my blackness, to recognize my own blackness. And it also goes uh, when I started my movement, my movement and resistance through Akola Tambo, that is the Bujerengue. Bujerengue is a rhythm from the Caribbean, not the Pacific. The Pacific will be more like Bejuco or Bambuco, but uh, the Caribbean has Bujerengue that comes from San Basilio de Palenque, that is the first territory in America, North, South, Central, first territory free of slaves. Mm -hmm. And it was in Colombia. They started singing Bujerengue, that, it's, that it comes from Buja, that it's the Portuguese word for noise. 
So people, uh, the Spaniards that were in that were colonizing these parts of the Caribbean of Colombia, when they heard the music of the enslaved Africans that were trying to reproduce or from, or from their origins of the mother Africa, um, they call it noise. Why are they doing noise? So it's the, the mixture between noise and dance. Dengue means dancing. So um, when when you see what you see here, obviously I will, I always like go through the naked. I feel like that that is a raw identification when like not use of clothes, no use of like any other means of identification than my own skin. And is the separation of like how I can live between these two these two uh, new new self that I am now and what I was before. So it, it has a little bit of like the steps that, that the women do when they are dancing in Bujerengi. I'm so sorry. I can, maybe if my partner helps me, I can teach you a little bit <laughs> how they dance. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, yeah uh, this one is really beautiful. It's a, screen, it's a screen print. I have a little of mistakes as you can see, but it's still like really beautiful. It's one of my favorites. I really plan to do a lot of like, um, textiles and fabrics for the dresses mm -hmm. and with this one yep um, mm -hmm. then I, I I have more of my previous works in, like, in Colombia when, when we were doing more medical spaces uh, here they are in Spanish obviously um, but what you can have a look you can have a look um, this one it's a poster that, that that we that we designed just before just after the manifestation of the big manifestation that happened just before the COVID and the pandemic happened in Colombia. Um, this one says, um, "Your capitalism gives me a headache," and then uh, here it says like "rebellion." With it's that it's a play on words in Spanish, so it's like difficult for me to translate. But it's like rebellion con huelga, cloruro, rebeldina, y antimachotico feminitil. So it's like we use like a lot of words that they usually put in medicine, and you not even understand. But we play it with like mixing it a little bit with like connotations of feminism and yeah, machismo. I think sexism is the translation in Spanish would be machism, or yeah, it's. I don't know. So yeah, and when I started these these um, posters, they were big, big steel screens. I think like one meter twelve, and I use a lot of like the symbolism of the rebellion of Star Wars because in Colombia the first liners they they use the that symbol also to signify the rebellion against the establishment. So that's why it's all it's always in my in my. You know, activism part, a part, part, a poster. Sorry, yeah, um, yeah. After after that, um, I went a little bit also into mental health, um, because I have the pleasure to meet a friend of mine that was studying medicine in in Leeds, and we had a beautiful conversation about how. How trauma was not about its identification, but it was it was it, it was indeed a fight that we were having it in our mental health. And I never thought it that like in that way, but it was like like how my victimization was so, so embedded in my brain and how um I wanted to transform this. I wanted to transform my speech and not uh, keep talking about like victim, but Keep talking about like how I can change the whole world and how it can can I change in myself and reflect it to others. So um, I always talk a lot a lot of with symbolism. I I love uh, you know, how shapes can translate into a really beautiful big conversation. So I use this one is one world one soul, and I use the blue indigo that is like the perfect color and it's always how the reflection of the inner spirit is supposed to be looking. This is a portrait of mine. Um, uh, and I, uh, well, this is supposed to be the sun and the symbols of the tears is like leaving behind um, a, a path of sadness 
and become this new reflection to the world. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. This one is a little bit closer to to what I have experienced from my own family and my mixed race um, heritage or in a, like ancestry. So my family has broken into it, it was broken into as like my mom and my dad were also split. And when that happened was a really big struggle between love, like what you want to be, you want to be with the black people or you want to be with the white people. And obviously when I was little, you want to go with like the best possible outcome and you go with the white people because they live better. They don't have so many options of like, you know, like thinking about where, what, what is your blackness like in every space. So you want to become them when you are little and you don't have any influence of like really strong black uh, identities in your family. So yeah, so this one is called the burden of greed. And it, it was um, a reflection of that, of that time in my life and how like a lot of like women that I had a conversations and along with that also were mixed race had also that same struggle of like, Am I black or do I want to be white? How how hard do I want to be white? And this is a, por a portrait of my dad. And this is supposed to be precisely my decision in, in that moment uh, when I decided to go for the gold instead of going for my culture and going for like realizing my own nurturing identification that it, it's the blindness of the images that are happening here, that, that are connected with the roots and the nature. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot of symbolism. I hope you like it anyway, it took you a lot of work. But yeah, it, this is a, a, a serigraphy script in mad ink. And yeah. And then this one, it's inspiring <laughs> So this one is also blue indigo, the perfect color, the spirit, and Wujerenge has become like a new way of like uh, transforming my resistance through the songs of Wujerenge have like quotidianity, love, endurance, pain. I don't know if you have heard of the word Lumba, sorry, Lumbalu. That is the cries that um, songs that cries for the spirits that transcends to the other world, and obviously for the spirits that stays for and suffers for the for those who have gone. So this poster is is a mix into Portuguese, French, and Spanish, because we had like a lot of like um individuals that were participating in our group of Pujerengue that were not Colombian and I wanted to be like also mixing mixing this influence that they were giving me. The the little fire dancers obviously are we are the dancers of Pujerengue because it's supposed to be a uh, drawn the Pujerengue is always doing a circle in a round. And uh it's supposed that we are like keeping a fire in the middle that is where the couples are dancing. So we are the fire that we burn everything that we touch. We are deciding if we are using it for destruction or are we using it to enlighten what we want to tell to the world. Mm. So yeah, it's it, so here is Kema, Kema lo que toca. So if you can read it by in Spanish, but it's, it's how do I say that? So Q in Spanish, you say Ku. But if you write it like if you are a millennial or <laughs> it will it will be like K. So K ma lo que toca. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And yeah, that's basically all the artworks if you want to have a little. So I have more and you can ask me more questions. Right now, I wanted to also bring another pieces of artworks, but I'm also having a exhibition in the consulate back in London, the Consulate of Colombia where I have more pictures of what uh, of my resistance artworks that like that we did for the Black Lives Matters in the pandemic, what we did for the national 
um, I mean, um, a strike. And what I did before coming to London, that is, that it's all the, I'm so sorry, I forgot one. <laughs> uh, it's here in the white back. No, 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 no. Hey, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, these are face They were also um, with this one we did with X Rebellion. It was supposed to be projected in the with XR, yeah, in back in London. And with um, and with no uh, no with Isabella Noero, that he was an organizer also for the climate climate justice uh, for Glasgow. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, so these are paste up. So I suppose they were saying right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's supposed to represent the Ubuntu. That is the that that is the belief of like we are all and I like I exist because we all exist. I'm not me without your without the other. Uh, with the hands, the the the, the this is the, one of the symbols of Ubuntu. So Ubuntu has this one. Or has this one, and yeah, you can see the typography. Don't be quiet. Justice is loud, and yeah, yeah, that's it. I think if you have any questions, please go ahead. Ask me about anything. Yeah. <laughs> So you were planning on using this with XR Rebellion? Yeah, no, we already use it. You have used it yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, so no, we are going part of this of today. At the end, we're going to do some face stops around the city for those who want to participate. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want, have a one and help us pay pay oh, that somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, there, there are some prints available for sale if you want to take one home. They're not so expensive, so it's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, do you have any other questions? No. How long have you been been making? I think like, like this. I think like I have um, uh, art like this when I was in inside of like my career, academic, you know, development. I was more into like producing artwork that it will be beautiful for the eye and just like not, not just like too much about like my inner discourse but it was when I was finishing my university that I had an encounter with another black artist that she was like we have even if you don't want to we have a responsibility as black individuals in, in a society that have been oppressed by white um, systemacy so even if you don't want to, you will face it sometime in your life that you will be like, hey, you are black and you need to show it or you need to embrace it or you need to be part of it. And I was like, I don't know so much about like you have, you need to, but I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to start talking about it because I was carrying a lot of, of that in my burden. So it was then when I decided like my artwork has to always talk about black femininity and, and mostly black femininity in the Latin diaspora. I feel like there's a lot of like invisibility of what black women in the black in, in the Latin diaspora uh, have done. I feel like the popular the popular um music influence, the popular, I don't know, um fashion characteristics that now we handle as Latin people are all embedded, are all inspired, are all referenced from Black communities. So I feel it's something that I owe and I have started since I finished my BA. Yeah, so like, it's a long 10 years ago. <laughs> I feel so old now. I went on Google and I don't care. <laughs>
how common is it where you come from for people to stand up and res resist or protest or make a stand in any way you are coming to the way against inequality? I think my country has a really long, long, long story history, history about resistance. There, there hasn't been one moment in my country where there has been a debacle or a, um, how do you say this? Uh, a clash between classes and 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 the government. Um, it's really common in Colombia to to be in this in this situation right now. There, there's uh there are big manifestations against um, a reform that is going uh, to help healthcare to be less monetized, monetized mm -hmm. and be, to be delivered to a small populations that are not close to you know big cities. And even though it's a really beautiful reform and obviously it has it lacks in some ways, there's a lot of people that are against it because obviously they will get less money into the big industry that from that handles the medicine to everyone but but yeah my country has always been in resistance has always been in this activism it's it's sad to see that we have like it, the growth of the country is because of these resistances because of this activism and because of these manifestations and and to see people that is still, there is still value you know like an area vision are, are trying to be uh, richer than the other, just to be, to, just to jump the fence to go to the other place, you know, to go to America, to go to Europe, or to go to to Britain, to Britain, to be have the better life. When we are the richest place, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we've got it kind of going on in this country in a completely different way than you know your experience. And color and all that, and maybe if you ask me about that, so different. But in the white population of this country, I see that I'm not a lot of changes, but it's actually made a big fight, you know, and the class, the mm -hmm. money, you know, all of that, the healthcare, all of that. And there is a big amount of people against it, but compared to the whole, mm -hmm. it's like. We're still it's a really big minority, and yeah, it's like it, um, yeah. But uh, but to but it's, uh, it's it's a light of hope that what that is happening in my country because I feel like arts has been like the way you know like the it has become some some stronger with my first activism that it was like I did posters that were showing black naked women and I posted all around Bogota. They got ripped off in less than 10 hours because they were supposed to be shaming black women. And, I, and or people were saying that why kids will see this, how kids will be seeing this. And then you see like a graffiti of a white woman being, you know, like so sexy, or you will see a publicity of a, a, of a guy who's just like brief on. And then I'm like, but you don't see black bodies in these same situations. Not even in not even in Bogota, not even in Cartagena, that the mostly of the population is black. So it's crazy how 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 this happened to me. I that happened to me almost like six years ago. And and obviously that's what that was one of like the, the reasons why I left Colombia and I wanted to look for places like like well, my I, I look for London because of like the the independence and the civil rights ha they had, and because it was com more common to see black people here than in Colombia, so that's why I London. And I wanted to talk more about blackness, but I I feel that when I return to Colombia, every time I return, there's more openness to these black artists, to these indigenous artists. There's so much room now to to their to their word that it gives it gives so much inspiration and life for me mm -hmm. and to give more like with with my partner we 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 are trying to show more artists of the latin community to bring them bring them here of these indigenous characteristics of these black characteristics to give them <clears throat> not just the power but also the, the visibilization of what is 
happening day by day in Colombia. As we are like now, I don't know, a little bit outside of what is like currently happening, we want that to keep, you know, rolling or to keep updating us, us and everyone around us. So I think, yeah, it's it's a battle, but it's it's giving hope. Yeah. Um, from what you're describing, your art feels very personal to mm. you, even though it's a you sharing experiences with others around the black and black community. Um, but I wanted to ask you if in your work you do any collaboration either in the design or the actual production of the arts. Um, so whether you co-design with someone or how does that feel? How do you how do you feel about it? So I have to do a lot of collaboration, but mostly doing like written work with illustration. I had a collaboration with a, a various poets uh, in the Ministry of Culture in Colombia with Black poets. Um, and that was like my first project with Black artists. That was so revitalizing. It was like, it was something that I wanted to happen. I usually, what, what it happens to me is usually I am, I am surrounded by white allies, as some people can call it that way. Um, but when when you are surrounded by by black people, black artists, black thinkers, I think that what happens is that just being around it, just being united, is already um, a show of resistance. It's already like a manifestations of like of like thousands and thousands of years of like repression. So for me, that when that happened for me it was like just like joy and it's ecstasy and obviously uh, it's imposter syndrome of like I don't deserve this maybe I'm not so good enough but yeah I feel like when when I was always talk with uh, like big publics like you I always say like my craving is juntanza juntanza means like joining with more people like me more people black people black artists black thinkers black whatever because um that's, that's when I feel that the that we are making a change when we see our faces when we talk to each other and I feel that that's when education can happen and brain education can happen so so for me that's like yeah joy when when those collaborations happens any other questions yeah um, do you have, firstly, thanks so much for your like, amazing presentations uh, and art. Do you, I was wondering if you had like a, a favorite medium that you feel like you'd be the most playful with or express yourself the most with, or, or does it change depending on what the project is? Yeah, I am married to screen printing. I feel that it's so, I, I just love it because it's so quick and easy. I'm so sorry for being so lazy, but I love it because it's so quick and easy and I can do like, thousands of it and I can just like paste it around the city and tell everyone and it can get rid of but they will not like you know delete my math matrix it's something like that like you cannot delete the original because the original I have it so yeah rip off how many posters you want because I will produce a thousand more you know like I will not stop my medium is there so that's that's why I'm super married with this screen print obviously I have done painting acrylics and I, I can feel the joy of the experimentation and the, ma the, the material, but for me, it's the message. For me, it's talking to the public. For me, it's to wake up, wake up souls that haven't been woke. And yeah, so I am super married. If you want to learn screen print and you come to London, visit me. I will definitely <laughs> give you one little workshop. It will be a mess, but it will be super fun. So yeah, just give me a call. I'm I'm super open, so don't don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I think it's my thirty minutes now, or uh, yeah, or <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone has another question, I have, um, sorry, I have a question. If that's okay. Um, I was just wondering, how do you think that your mirrorism and your screen printing serves as a form of education? Mm, I think like it's it's like I feel like everyone wants to get to be 
to be educated in a way, but it's only when you are in the right mental state or when you look the right way or you look into the right position that it happens. For me, neuralism is that, it's just given the education, given an open education, given a free space for, for everyone to look at. If you don't want to look at them, but it's there. So for me, muralism and, and posters is, is the way of like, you cannot hide from me anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to give you this information. Even if you don't want to, it will be, there will be a moment for you to see it. So that's how I, I feel that this is a way of education. Even if it will be like, some people will call it like not, why not? It will be visual art. I don't know. For me, art is the connection with other humans. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm in your one hour. Yeah. Oh, it's not in. Yeah. So I just rather have a yeah, yeah. Should I say you've been on the summer? Yeah. Yeah, I'll introduce you. I'll introduce you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I've got this presenter and then I think so. I don't know why it's just not the Atrás, tú puedes hablar, voy a dar una, una breve intro. Y si tú puedes ir hablando así, medio pausa, me algo para que yo te vaya traduciendo. Bueno, entonces, sí. eh, va, pues, eh, ok. Ya vamos a comenzar. Ya va, no, yo te hago así, listo. Yo te hago vamos. así, empezamos. Solo te voy a dar como una introducción para que la gente sepa y, y ya después de eso vamos a, a poder ir. Ah, sorry, sorry. Sí. Ok, uh, so now we're going to have um, all the way from Mexico. We have the artist of Gustavo Chavez Pavón, whose video you saw a bit earlier on. So he goes by Guchepe. Uh, he's right now based in DF, in the capital district, but he's from Chiapas. Um, His, his work is massively based as well in the Zapatista movement in, in Mexico, and he does collective expo expositions. Um, he, he does muralism as well uh, in a lot of urban marginalized areas. Uh, and he works, for example, with indigenous peoples, um, black people, peasant communities, uh, and trade unions, as well as doing a lot of work in universities across the world. He, his muralism is, is didactic, It is also communitary and it's militant and it's for popular organization, uh, as well as being autonomous and rebellious. And um, he's been in places like Palestine, Palestine, Austria, obviously Chiapas, and uh, places like the Basque Country and Scotland. And yeah, I'm very excited to have him here with us today. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about his work. Listo, compa. Cuando estés listo, dale y yo te doy traducción. Hola, hola a todos. Buenos días, buenas noches, buenas tardes a todas y a todos. Aquí desde México reciban un saludo rebelde y recio. Okay, hello to everybody. Uh, I want to give you a warm greeting, a warm and rebellious greeting all the way from Mexico. Bueno. Miren, quiero contarles un poco de la historia del muralismo en México y en el mundo. I want to tell you all a bit about the history of um, muralism in Mexico and in other world. Tenemos 30 minutos, ¿verdad, Elena? Sí, compa. Bueno, miren, la, la historia del muralismo en México tiene que ver con nuestros pueblos originarios. Antes ¿Sí? nuestros pueblos originarios hacían muchos murales como una forma religiosa de, de que las comunidades se integraran. So our originary peoples did muralism as a sort of religious way to integrate the communities. Tuvieran una identidad, ajá, y tuvieran una identidad fuerte arraigada a esas mismas comunidades. Esa era la intención de los murales que se hacían en el mundo prehispánico. So uh, they had an identity that was embedded within these communities, um, and that was the reason of being of muralism in the pre-Hispanic world. Hay conocimiento amplio de las estrellas, de la galaxia, de los planetas, de la tierra girando alrededor del sol, de la luna, de, las, este, de los días para sembrar, de los días para vivir, de los días de lluvia. Había un conocimiento amplio de la naturaleza, del universo, había una ciencia casi exacta, los 365 días. Uh, teníamos una civilización muy adelantada hasta que llegó la invasión de los españoles. But, so, uh, we knew a lot about the stars, about the galaxy, about the moon, uh, about the um, siembra, the um, siembra, cropping, about the cropping, uh, and about the relationship with the galaxy and how um, the nature worked. Uh, and we knew the, the workings of the times in 875 days before the arrivals of the Spaniards to our territories. 
todo esto estaba basado en ir la tierra, de convivir con la tierra de una manera armónica, no explotándola, no echándola a perder, no presionándola para extraerle todos los productos, no, sino de una manera de, de, de estar eh, en equilibrio con la naturaleza y por eso concebíamos a la tierra como nuestra madre. Era una relación eh, muy armónica con la tierra, con el universo y con los seres humanos. So, um, this is based in a way of living with the earth, uh, living with Mother Earth in a way that's harmonious and different from its exploitation and plunder to get product from it. Um, and that is uh, the way of living in a way that is harmonious with nature uh, so that human beings can live with Mother Earth. Después de eso, hasta 1921, se comienzan a hacer de nuevo un movimiento moralista en México con la creación de la Secretaría de Educación Pública y la invitación a los diferentes moralistas, pintores, poetas, músicos a integrarse a las jornadas de educación al pueblo mexicano que acababa de terminar una revolución. Ok, so in 1920, in 1921, eh, began the muralist movement in Mexico that was embedded with eh, public education in which artists and muralists were invited uh, to be part um, in order to be making uh, art with the community. Y este, entonces, eso, eso es algo que marca, eh, que determina mucho el proceso del movimiento muralista moderno en México de 1921, eh, el, la, el compromiso con el, con el sector educativo, con las intenciones de llevar la educación a un mundo, a un país que acaba de salir de su revolución, las intenciones de que la educación sirviera para transformar las condiciones de miseria, de pobreza y de ignorancia que nos dejó la conquista. Perdón, es que me toca pasar porque se me olvida, perdón. Pero eso es un momento muy importante en lo que es ahora el movimiento moderno muralista en México y cómo it was embedded with the sector of education in order for the revolution to happen. Um, entonces, perdón, después de lo de cómo el sector educativo se, um, eh, se comprometió, ah, yeah, it was compromised with artists and muralists, yeah, as a way of education for the revolution. Sí, se trata de que, con la revolución, se trata de que todo el pueblo que había estado marginado del conocimiento, se le, primero con la conquista, de los españoles se nos quitó toda posibilidad de conocimiento de nuestra civilización y se nos hizo ignorantes de, la, de los nuevos conocimientos que trajeron los españoles. Solamente so, se nos trató como esclavos. Yeah. So, perdón, es que sí. So, um, what happened with the marginalization of, of people since the, um, since, the, since the conquest was that the peoples um, were marginalized in a, in a way that they couldn't access education. Um, and therefore, um, you know, that was kind of the placing of the modern muralist movement in, in, in Mexico um, for people that had been uh, exploited. Sí, se nos, se nos excluyó del conocimiento universal. Se nos, se nos quitó primero, se, primero se nos quitó nuestra raíz cultural, nuestra civilización, y después se nos excluyó del conocimiento universal, se nos marginó, se nos mandó a los montes, y se nos borró de toda la historia oficial. En México, okay. país indígena por, por, por excelencia, se trató de que no fuera indígena. En México es, hay un racismo muy fuerte. So what happens, un segundo. Eh, what happens is that it started to destroy the universal knowledge and the universal knowledge of the, of the communities by, eh, you know, by plundering from the root. Um, eh, of the peoples, and then the peoples were sent to the to the far away, um, like fields, um, and 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 you know it signifies like the strong racism that is in Mexico. Entonces, uno de los aportes más fuertes del muralismo es haber recobrado la iconografía y el discurso de nuestras civilizaciones indígenas y haberlos puesto sobre los muros más importantes de este país, sobre los muros de las escuelas, sobre los muros y sobre los muros del Palacio Nacional, 
y de los edificios públicos más importantes. So one of the most important um, aspects of, of muralism in Mexico is about iconography and indigenous iconography um, and how murals were placed in the schools as well as very important buildings in Mexico like the National Palace, for example. Y eh, después de ahí, todo los, el movimiento muralista creció tan fuerte, pero los muralistas también adquirieron un compromiso con el pueblo que muchos eh, eh, retomaron uh -huh. las demandas más fuertes de los campesinos, de los indígenas, se comprometieron mucho con el pueblo y eso no les gustó nada ni al gobierno, ni a los ricos, ni al fascismo de este país, ni al imperialismo eh, internacional que siempre está pendiente de los movimientos democráticos que no nos deja avanzar. Um, so in, in that sense, the, the movement uh, made a compromise with the peoples, with the demands of, of the peasants and of the indigenous peoples. And that was not something that was um, favored uh, in the eyes of the elite class uh, and of the imperialist classes and of those that uh, think that democracy can be a means of liberation. El que, el, que, el que las condiciones en nuestros continentes, por ejemplo en Asia, en África y en América, sean condiciones deplorables, de miseria, de marginación, de, po de pobreza, de ignorancia, no es nada natural, no es, una, no es porque somos flojos, no es porque no nos guste estudiar o trabajar, sino es una condición de todos los imperialismos que hay en Europa y en América, que condicionan la pobreza para el desarrollo de esos eh, sus supuestos países desarrollados. So the conditions that we have in the continents like Africa, Asia, and Latin America are of deplorable poverty eh, and marginalization. And this is something that is not natural. It's not because of the way that we are. And it's not, eh, yeah, it's nothing to do with the people, but it's a condition eh, due to the imperialist powers and the colonialist powers of Europe and the United States. Es por esto que en 1945, después de terminada el gran fraude de la guerra mundial, que de repente nosotros lo vemos como un fraude, este, y una historia que es escrita por los norteamericanos, que nos hemos tenido que tragar todo, todos los latinoamericanos, eh, después de esa guerra eh, vino la Guerra Fría, y en México la Guerra Fría se transformó en una guerra del imperialismo contra el muralismo mexicano. Eh, so after 1945, that was the big fraud of the World War. Um, this was a history that was written by the United States. And in Latin America, we had to swallow, up, swallow it up whole. And then in, in Mexico, um, what happened during the Cold War is that in the space of the Cold War, um, muralism became a means of, of resisting the plunder of the people because of this political situation. El gobierno norteamericano a través de la CIA y a través de otras dependencias culturales empezaron a apoyar a grupos de niños de clase media y, grup y niños de clase alta para que desarrollan un tipo de arte individualista mm -hmm. que contrastara con el muralismo que, que pretendía ser comunitario. Entonces apoyaron Pero, estos grupos. Bueno, perdón. Entonces, eh, so in the governments eh, of the USA, you know, that was working through the CIA, what happened is that they would go and they would support, um, you know, young people from, from middle and upper classes um, to, to uphold individu individualistic muralism, a uh, muralism that wasn't based um, uh, on, a, on a communitary uh, sense. Claro, no podía ser de otra forma porque los, nor los norteamericanos empezaron a darse cuenta de lo, que ya, de lo que ya sabían los muralistas mexicanos, que el muralismo no solamente es un medio de expresión, sino también es un medio de comunicación masiva. So they, they, this happens because they start noticing something that we already knew as muralists, that muralism isn't just a form of communication, but it's also... Um, it's also a form of um, edu massive education, like communal education for the masses. Mm -hmm. Y para todos los imperialismos que siempre están interviniendo en los países por asuntos no de patrióticos, no, no de derechos humanos, sino por intereses económicos, 
es muy importante controlar todos los medios de comunicación. So, and because, yeah, this has been done because in imperialist interventions that claim to be for human rights, but in reality are for economic interest, um, um, they, they do this because uh, they know that muralism can be used as a form of mass communication. Es por esto que eh, eh, hicieron sabotaje, trataron de destruir, dieron órdenes a los gobiernos mexicanos para que ya no apoyaran al muralismo desde los niveles oficiales. So, and that's why La intervención the... norteamericana fue fuerte. En... So that's why the governments of Mexico uh, started to sabotage the efforts of communal muralism um, through as well um, the intervention of the USA. Y el movimiento muralista en México empezó a decaer. And the muralist, a... and the muralist sí. movement in Mexico for a while started to decay. Después el muralismo en México fue hecho por algunas personas de manera heroica, por algunas personalidades como José Hernández Delgadillo y otros pintores que lo hacían de manera estoica, de manera heroica, con recursos propios y o por grupos de manera eh, eh, autogestiva y de manera autónoma. So, and that uh, after it started to become a wave of um, heroic and stoic muralisms by artists like Garrillo that began to do muralism um, in a way that was in their own accord uh, as a way of, yeah, like heroism and est um, estoica, est estoicism. No sé. Heroica. Heroica, heroica, like sí. heroic, like as if it was like a means of, yeah, being heroic. Sí, claro, es, es una actitud heroica el trabajar sin dinero, sin cobrar, sin apoyos y sin un futuro. So it's a, it's a heroic manifestation to work uh, without money, without support, and without a means for a future. De tal manera que muchos de los, de la gente que nos hemos dedicado al muralismo, sabemos que no tenemos futuro, pero sin embargo, nos alienta la lucha de nuestros pueblos, el corazón de nuestros pueblos. And muralists, uh, we may know, for example, that uh, although we don't have a future, supposedly, what keeps us going um, is the force and the heart of the peoples. Nos inspira la necesidad de cambiar al mundo. We get inspired by the need to change the world. Nuestro mundo. Our world. Y en ese proceso, en esos caminos, conocemos mucha gente, muchos compañeros en todo el mundo que padecen también las políticas imperialistas y compartimos con ellos porque nos invitan y hacemos redes solidarias internacionalistas. Uh, and in this path, we, we meet compañeros, comrades all across the world uh, that with us want to share these efforts um, to resist against the imperialist forces. And in this way, we create networks and chains of solidarity and of unification. Como se dice por ahí, si eh, las grandes corporaciones, si las grandes industrias globalizan la miseria, la pobreza, la explotación, el saqueo de los pueblos, nosotros tratamos de globalizar la solidaridad. As the saying goes, if the big corporations are trying to globalize plunder, exploitation, um, and the oppression of the people, what we are trying to globalize is solidarity. La solidaridad, la solidaridad a través también de gente como lo ha sido el muralismo. Solidarity through the medium uh, that has been muralism, for example. Este, de esta manera hemos estado en muchos pueblos de México, en muchos rincones donde la gente lucha como en las comunidades zapatistas. And in this way, uh, a lot of peoples of Mexico have been in resistance where communities are fighting together, such as in the example of the Zapatista communities. Y desde ahí 
ahí fuimos solidariamente a intercambiar nuestra sangre, nuestros colores, nuestros sueños y nuestros anhelos de libertad a los muros de Palestina. And in that way, we went to um, exchange uh, our blood, our colors, and our dreams with the murals of Palestine, the Palestine peoples. A los países del mundo a donde hemos ido a pintar murales, como te decía, con la intención de usarlos para difundir nuestras luchas, para hacerlas públicas, para hacerlas masivas, que todo mundo vea a los que nadie ve, a los que nadie quiere ver, a and los in, pobres de este mundo. And in that way, in the countries um, that we go to paint muralism, is, is in order to spread our fight, to spread our struggle, struggle that people don't want to see, um, struggle that people um, yeah, would like to, block away, but we spread it with the world. En el mundo en general, en muchos países como en Irlanda del Norte, en Cerdeña, en Argentina, en Chile, con la Brigada Ramón La Parra, eh, en Bolivia, en Colombia, en El Salvador, en Nicaragua, en muchos países se dieron cuenta también de las grandes posibilidades que tienen los muros y los usaron para hacer la difusión de sus problemas. And in many places in the, in the world, like Cerdania, like Chile, like Argentina, within the brigade of Ramon Aparra, as well as Nicaragua, eh, as well as Colombia, there started to be an awakening where people could realize that they, um, that they could use muralism in order to portray their struggle and their fight. In Irlanda del Norte, también. In Northern Ireland, as well. In mm -hmm. todos los lugares donde hemos ido, El problema de, la, de, de los imperialismos es el mismo, es el saqueo, la división de los pueblos y, y la explotación de las personas. And in all the places that have been confronted by the issues of imperialism, a lot of our problems are the same. It's, it's, it's plunder, it's exploitation, it's the tactics of, of divide and conquer. And therefore, yeah, that makes us being able to relate. Mm -hmm. And in pueblos y lo es a través de los muros. And nowadays it's not something that is only in Mexico. It's something that is for the whole world. Uh, it can belong to the whole world to use the medium of muralism to take forward the fight of the peoples for another reality. Me, 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 parece, me parece muy importante que nuestros pueblos humildes, que nuestros pueblos que están luchando tengan por lo menos este medio de comunicación en donde puedan expresarse, en donde se puedan ver a sí mismos y los pueda ver el mundo entero, porque parece que todos quieran ver un mundo mejor, pero nadie hace realmente nada por cambiar el mundo. And it's important um, that the, the peoples that are humble all across the world are able to access this as a form of communication so that, that they can see themselves. Because what we often see is people saying um, that they want to change the world, but after not doing absolutely anything about it. En, much, en muchos países se habla de luchar por la ecología, por salvar al mundo, pero realmente nadie hace nada. Si no cambiamos las estructuras económicas, políticas y la producción, la forma de producir los productos de la tierra, toda la lucha por la ecología es simple jardinería. Um, so a lot of countries that claim to be struggling for uh, ecology and for the protection of, of, mother, of mother Earth um, no one really does anything because it's about the fighting of systemic issues of the economic system, of the political system, and the way in which produce is taken away from the earth. Um, and, and because in that sense, if you're fighting for the environment and then you're fighting for the ecology without uh, this lens, it's simply gardening. Desde nuestras experiencias, me parece que es importante 
tomar los muros de todo el mundo para hacernos presentes. I think through my experience, it's important to realize that it's 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 important to take on all the all the walls of the world to make ourselves present. Los jóvenes estudiantes siempre tienen algo que decir. For example, the 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 youth and the students always have something to say. Los obreros, los trabajadores del campo, en América, en Asia, en África, creo que todo el mundo tenemos que decir. No solamente estar viendo cómo desde Europa se deciden todos los destinos del mundo o desde Estados Unidos. So, you know, a lot of people have a lot to say. People that are the workers, uh, the people that work the land, eh, you know, people that are humble have so much to say. And therefore, it cannot only be in the perspective of the Europeans and the people from the United States. Los medios de comunicación siguen siendo una gran cortina que dirigen nuestra forma de pensar, nuestra forma de ver y nuestra forma de crear conceptos. Y esto es lo que queremos también romper. Queremos ser una alternativa para nuestros pueblos que tienen la necesidad de ser críticos, de tener un pensamiento autónomo. Uh, because communication, mediums of communication are often just a, a veil and a, and a curtain of smoke um, that don't allow us to create our own concepts our own concepts to be autonomous, our own concepts to be critical. Es por esto que a los lugares a donde vamos a pintar, procuramos que todos se integren a la concepción y a la realización de los murales públicos. Um, and that's why when we go somewhere to paint, we make sure that um, everyone is integrated in the creation of the concept eh, and the ideals of the communal mural. Yo creo que esta, esta, yo creo que esta necesidad de hacer esfuerzos porque el mundo, por salvar un poco al mundo, porque el mundo sea mejor, no corresponde solamente a las y a las transnacionales, sino también corresponde a las personas sencillas como tú, como yo, como la gente que andamos en las calles y padecemos las políticas de los malos gobiernos. So because thus uh, the efforts to to make the world better, to save the world, the world are not something that is to be done by the transnational corporations. Instead, it's for people like you, like me, like everyone that is walking in the street and is um, living the, the, the reality of the bad governance. Yo no sé si ustedes lo ven en el lugar en donde viven, pero ahora acá en Latinoamérica, sobre todo en Latinoamérica y en algunos lugares de África y en algunos lugares de Asia, hay muchos estudiantes y mucha gente tomando los muros para expresar lo que están sintiendo, para mostrar lo que están viendo. So I don't know how it is in the place that you guys are living, but at least eh, where I'm from in Latin America, a lot of young people, especially a lot of students, are taking on walls in, in order to express how they're feeling and what they are thinking. Porque todo el mundo, por ejemplo, cuando hay guerras, todo el mundo se enoja y, y vocifera y lloran por una bomba que tal vez pusieron en algún metro en Europa. Pero nadie habla de las miles de bombas que caen en Siria o de los miles de bombardeos que los gobiernos sionistas de Israel tiran sobre el pueblo palestino o sobre la guerra que hicieron sobre Libia o sobre el saqueo y el robo que están tratando de hacer con Venezuela y con muchos otros países. Nadie habla de esas guerras. Nos quieren vender la idea de un mundo maravilloso donde la OTAN y los Estados Unidos son los héroes de un mundo desconocido. Because in all of these wars, people, for example, cry for a bomb that is placed in a metro. Esto que pasó, como que se vuelve la señal. ¿Es de allá? Sí, 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 estás bien. A lot of people here are always crying for a bomb that is placed in a metro in Europe. But then how come these people don't cry for the bombs that are rained on in Syria, eh, in, in occupied Palestine, in Venezuela, in Libya? Eh, no one cries for the wars that are taken forward by NATO and by the USA. Este, perdón, este, compañera, eh, ¿cómo vamos de tiempo? ¿Estamos bien? Eh, sí, yo creo que unos, unos cinco o diez minuticos más, compa, si te parece bien. 
no, no, no te parece, no, no es que es bueno si tienen preguntas o algo. Ah, ya sí, tienes razón. Si quieres eh, unos cinco minutos más y después hacemos una ronda de preguntas. Ah, muy bien. Está bien. Sí, sí, sí. Sí. En, en todo, en to, entonces, en todo caso, creemos que el mural es una trinchera más del arte y la cultura para nuestros pueblos que están luchando por su libertad. So in that way, we believe that walls are um, trinchera. Peleando. Sí, sí, are like a battlefield. Yeah, thank you. Are like a battlefield uh, for the people that are going for their um, liberty and their freedom. Cuando nosotros estuvimos en Chiapas, en las montañas, hacíamos murales en todas las escuelas, pero también en otros muros de las mismas comunidades en las montañas para mostrar el territorio zapatista, pero también para que el territorio zapatista estuviera lleno de alegría, de colores, porque a veces parecía que nos quieren prohibir hasta la alegría. So why we did uh, the murals when we were in Chiapas, up in the mountains, so we tried to do them, for example, uh, in schools, in the mountains, in all kinds of places, and in the Zapatista territory. And it was also to keep the place happy and full of joy, because sometimes it even feels that that is something that they want to take away from us. Hemos, nos esforzamos porque esas huellas de colores sean huellas de eso, de poesía, de música, de baile, que sean huellas alegres donde mostremos esta, este espíritu que nos llena para poder cambiar nuestro mundo. Y claro que cambiamos nuestro mundo, cambiamos nuestro mundo un poco y eso nos, nos hizo más fuertes. So all these prints of color um, are to create poetry, to create music, to create dance, um, and it's so that we can keep um, and joy, so that we can keep joy in order to be able to change the world because through joy, that is what makes us stronger. Estamos llenos de utopías, estamos llenos de sueños imposibles, pero si no soñáramos, si no nos atreviéramos a soñar, ¿qué cosa fuéramos, corazón? ¿Qué cosa fuéramos? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're full of utopias and we're full of dreams that are impossible <laughs> because if we can't dream things that are impossible then uh, what is the point we have to be full of dreams that seem impossible and seem that they are utopia because then we will be able to do things that might be impossible porque también, como decía el poeta, pintamos porque creemos en la gente y porque venceremos la derrota. Y porque no podemos ni queremos dejar que el color se haga ceniza. ¿Que el color se haga ceniza? No queremos ni podemos dejar que el color y la vida se hagan ceniza. Y por eso pintamos. So we paint, as one poet used to say, We paint because we believe in the people and, and we paint um, so that the color doesn't become ash. And that, that is why we keep painting. Se fue el sonido. Gracias. Ahí está, ahí está el sonido. Ah, sí. sí, entonces muchas gracias, Guchepe. Uh, now we're going to do a little bit of QA. If anyone wants to ask uh, Gustavo a question, now is your time if you want to think about something to ask him. Entonces les, les estoy diciendo eh, si te quieren preguntar algo. Uh -huh. Sí, sí, sí. sí. And we have a question, yeah? Uh, yeah Dale, yo la traduzco al inglés o como quieras. Uh, ¿Cuál fue tu primer mural y cómo fue la experiencia? Eh, ¿fue, ¿Fue como fue de una vez comunitario o fue un mural eh, hecho solamente por ti, activista? ¿Cuál fue tu primer mural? 
So, sorry, antes de que, so what Lidia is asking is what was your first mural and if it was a community mural or, or was it just yourself being an activist mural? Mm -hmm. ¿Me, ¿Me puedes repetir la pregunta, compañera? Es que casi no, como que se perdió un poquito el audio. Ok. ¿Qué, ¿Cómo fue tu primer mural? ¿Y si fue un mural comunitario o fue un proyecto personal activista? Ah, es que, bueno, mira, para, para, para platicar mi historia necesitaríamos como dos horas, tal vez, como tres. Pero yo, yo, yo no soy de universidad, yo no soy de academia. Tampoco estoy a favor del arte de academia y tampoco estoy en contra. Yo me formé de manera autodidacta, pero, pero soy egresado de los movimientos político-culturales en mi país. Yo estuve en Juchitán, yo iba hacia Nicaragua, quería conocer Nicaragua o El Salvador cuando estaban en guerra, pero llegué a un pueblo que se llama Juchitán en el sur, en el sur de mi país. Y ahí comenzamos a hacer una revolución muy fuerte con una organización que se llamaba Coalición Obrero Campesina Estudiantil del Istmo, la COSEI. Entonces había una especie de guerra en nuestro país contra todo lo que parecía democrático. Había persecución, había cárcel, había exilio. Y nosotros tuvimos que hacer pintas con letras para exigir que hubiera democracia, para exigir que el ejército mexicano, que siempre ha actuado como un ejército de ocupación en contra de los mexicanos, que cesara la represión y que las policías también dejaran de reprimir y que liberaran a nuestros compañeros que estaban presos en las cárceles. Éramos unos, yo era un niño casi en Juchitán, siempre he sido, siempre me ha gustado conocer el mundo. Aunque soy de la Ciudad de México, me gusta viajar por mi país. Y yo llegué cuando iba hacia Nicaragua, como les decía, y entonces en esos momentos me integré a las luchas de la COSEI, a la organización, y entonces empezamos a salir a las calles en las noches, de manera clandestina, a hacer pintas. Y a las pintas, poco a poco, le fuimos poniendo, eh, le fuimos poniendo poco a poco eh, imágenes y así fuimos haciendo murales en colectivo, en grupos clandestinos, en la noche. Y, y así fue como nacimos haciendo murales. Ok, so I'm going to say that I'm going to miss a lot of what was said, but basically, um, you know, what he was saying is that his, his work was started in, in Cuchitas where there was a revolution uh, and that was a revolution of peasants and workers and students um, that were resisting against exile and, and, and plunder from the police. Uh, so they used to work in a clandestine way in the night in community um, to, to paint and to paint messages that were demanding, um, you know, like for, for the police to, to stop repressing the people. And it was always done in a collective way and as a group. Listo, gracias, compa. Another um, question. Has uh, any of your murals ever been destroyed or painted over as a means of violence or disagreement? So not mm -hmm. another artist painted over it, but someone, because it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. It's how someone got the extent of destroying it. Mm -hmm. Eh, lo que está preguntando la compañera es que si alguna vez alguien te ha pintado por encima de tus murales como una manera de tratar de destruirlos, como si eh, las personas que no están de acuerdo han intentado destruir tu muralismo este, para, pues, digamos, sí, como que silenciar tu palabra, ¿sí? Sí, sí ha, sí ha habido la policía, los soldados... Y de alguna, en algunas veces también los grafiteros, ¿no? Pero es, es, muy, es muy lógico que eso pase, porque al arte público siempre le, le pasa alguna muestra de, de afecto o de desafecto, ¿no? Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it has been a lot of the times the police, the military, um, and sometimes even graffiti art paint, like graffiti people. Um, but it's logic, no, because the art that is public, there is always um, an angle that is either in favor or against. Pero, pero, en, pero en las comunidades donde trabajamos eh, dentro de las organizaciones, como con el zapatismo, como con los compañeros palestinos, 
como con otros diversos grupos, los murales, como la misma gente participa, la misma gente los cuida y no permite que nadie les haga nada. However, in the communities that we work, for example, in the Zapatista communities or in the communities in, in Palestine, because they're communal and because uh, everyone participates, it also means that everyone takes care of them and everyone makes sure that nothing happens to them. Gracias. There's a, hay otra pregunta. Yes? Well, we are going to go to the next, next thing in this. Eh, te están preguntando acá la compañera, ¿cuál es tu próximo mural? ¿Cuál es la siguiente, el, el siguiente proyecto que estás trabajando? Bueno, a, ahorita no tenemos ningún proyecto. Eh, trabajamos con, eh, estamos haciendo algunas pintas políticas. No, no dejo de, ser, de hacer pintas políticas. Yo no creo que soy artista. Yo creo que soy un activista y un activista político y no eh, quiero ser una, una no, no, ya bueno te lo dejo ¿qué traduce? ya, gracias este, eh, so right now there is not a current mural that we're working on um, eh, eh, but I don't consider really myself an artist I consider myself more ahorita las condiciones en México pero ahorita sí I consider my death, I, can, ya, 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 ya. I consider va, va, de pronto para que sepas cuando termine hablar. Este, I consider myself an activist and like a, a, a political activist. Um, and the conditions right now in Mexico, sí. Las condiciones en México, ¿qué? Actualmente las condiciones en México eh, son un poco diferentes con el con el presidente que está tratando tratando de acabar con la corrupción, tratando de hacer cosas honestas, es un poco diferente, entonces ahorita la lucha está un poco relajada y yo estoy un poco sin trabajo, estamos tratando de organizar algo, pero como no tenemos presupuesto, no tenemos, vivimos de poco, entonces es muy poco lo que podemos hacer. Eso So right now in the situation in, in Mexico, um, you know, the current government means that actually the struggle is a bit more relaxed and I am therefore without work. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> because we, also, uh, we also, you know, work without a lot of like financiation and a lot of um, economic means. So. Um, yeah, let's do, sorry, let's do last maybe two questions and because there's one other Part and then we have to do the mural painting. Yeah. Las vamos a hacer las últimas dos preguntas, compañeros, si te parece bien. Yeah. Sí. Would, um, would you consider a mural just a piece of, of artwork um, or could it be a message, just, just language? Do you, do you see a difference between one being a mural and one being something else or are they both a mural? Este, lo que dice el compañero es que si te parece que um, el muralismo puede ser, tiene que ser siempre como una pintura, como una obra de arte, o si te parece que también puede ser un mensaje escrito. ¿Te parece que ambas cosas pueden ser igualmente un mural? Este, eh, yo, no, yo, no, yo creo que las cosas no tienen que ser como yo pienso, para empezar. <laughs> I don't think things have to be what I think. To begin. <laughs> y, y, y me, pare, me, parece, me parece que hay cosas muy bonitas en todo el mundo y muy atractivas y muy educativas. And I think that, you know, there's beautiful, beautiful things all across the world that are very educational and attractive. Y hablando de la, y hablando de la estética, mm -hmm. hay tanta estética Tal vez discurso muy elaborado, hablando de la estética, hay un hay un tanta estética curso plástico muy elaborado, como tal vez en una letra A con, con... Ay, te trabaste. Ah, no, ya. Letra. 
se trabaja con, perdón, que hay un discurso elabor, muy, muy elaborado eh, de pronto con una letra y qué, perdón. Que, que hay un discurso en, en un mural con mucha elaboración, puede haber mucha estética, lo mismo que en una gran letra A, negra o blanca, también puede haber mucha estética y se vale, ¿no? So, um, in a mural that can be super elaborated and can have a lot of aesthetic, that can have the same, a lot of aesthetic and a very elaborated um, discourse, you can actually find the same amount of, um, of aesthetic in a simple letter A. Mm -hmm. Va, listo. Creo que, eh, no sé, bueno, de pronto una, yo creo que ya. Sí, I think, bueno, muchas gracias, Guchepe. Thank you so much. Un aplauso. ¿Se acabó el tiempo? Gracias, sí, gracias, sí, compa, muchas gracias. ¿Se acabó el tiempo? Sí, creo que ya, porque es que tenemos eh, otras, otras cositas, pero muchas gracias, en serio, por, por estas bueno, palabras tan especiales. ¿Quieres decir otra yo cosa? Nomás, sí, sí, yo, yo nomás les quería... Les, One last thing. Okay. Yo, nomás les, yo nomás les quería recordar que el arte en general es, una, es parte de una naturaleza humana, no es, no es exclusiva de quien tiene un doctorado o un documento, el arte es un, es un parte de, un, de una forma de hablar, de comunicarse natural de los seres humanos. Y eso lo hemos descubierto en las montañas, en los valles, en el mar, en todos los rincones del mundo donde hemos ido. El arte es una forma de, humanizar, de humanizarnos más. Es una posibilidad que tenemos todos los seres humanos. No es exclusiva de nadie, ni mucho menos de un título. Uh, so... Espera, perdón. Uh, so one last thing that I wanted to do is to remind you all that art is within human nature. To do art, you don't need a doctorate, you don't need any sort of document, and you don't need anything. Um, what we have seen in the mountains, in the valleys, and in the seas, and in all the corners that we've been to, is that um, art is used to make us more human. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias, Guchepe. Gracias, compañeros. Que viva la libertad. Que viva la libertad. Que viva, que viva. Yes. Wow. Increíble. Bueno, pues, este... Eh, no sé si te quieras quedar. Vamos a exponer unos trabajos de unas compañeras en Colombia. Eh, si quieres quedarte, pues dale si quieres. Si no te importa, eh, eh, sí. Como tú prefieras, compa. Pero bueno, muchas gracias, de verdad. Gracias a ustedes. Bueno, tengo que trabajar, pero me Dale. quedo un ratito. Ok, como quieras. Bueno, ahí vamos hablando. Con... Ok, well, wow. That was, that was the intervention of Guchepe. Eh, I hope everybody enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And um, now we're going to have some work eh, from some, eh, you know, artists and activists that are based in Colombia, because that's also one of the points that we're wanting to connect. I appreciate, I know it's quite long. I appreciate everyone's time right now. Uh, so these artists are based in Colombia. Uh, unfortunately, my friend Laura that was actually going to present it uh, couldn't make it today, but I'm going to talk a bit about them. And then they have sent to us some videos and some, pho some photographies um, that are also using, you know, their art as a means of resistance. So yeah, there are three Colombian women who have been working on a photographic record uh, in different ecosystems and territorial struggles in, in Colombia um, and the key to resistance, and they think that these are key of, uh, to resistance that are taking place in Colombia because they bring the public closer to different realities of, and ways of lives that have been forgotten, um, which are often ignored and stigmatized. And their exhibition is a window and a space um, for reflection, um, which is usually in Bogota, uh, the capital of Colombia. And yeah, we want to, you know, make them part of this exhibition here in the UK, just to show, you know, the power um, of, of art as a means of social transformation. 
So who they are is they are um, Natalia, so they're from different collectives. So they're Natalia from Viernes por el Futuro, Bogotá, Fridays for Big Future in Bogotá. Uh, Alejandra from Red Conejera is another collective. And Milla from Milla Juana from um, Achincaya Resist the Campaign in Buenaventura in El Choco. So now we're going to um, yeah, to screen share and show a bit of their work. Yeah, it's quite short, but sorry. So just one second, we're gonna show this here now. Um, okay, so these are the presentations of, of the women in Colombia. And they're also watching on Zoom, just so you know. So they're with us. Hola, ¿cómo están? Me presento, mi nombre es Sorry, 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 perdón, perdón, perdón. I'm gonna start again because I'm gonna screen share. I'm so sorry, everyone. Yeah, I think that's screen sharing, yeah. Ay. Okay, here we go now. Muchas gracias. Eh, it was too fast. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm gonna just show like the the the, the photos and the photography of, of ecosystems that the compañera sent. So from the Red Conejera Collective in Colombia, um, of the of the fauna in, in her territory. Yeah, so yeah, there are different three different separate collectives. Um, that one was the one from um, Red Conejera, and then this one is, if I'm not wrong, Achincaya Resiste. So. Hola, los saludo desde Colombia. Mi nombre es Miguel Juan Pachama y soy fotógrafa de Libertad de Milanes de la ciudad de Argentina. Actualmente me estoy estudiando en la Universidad de Antioquia, donde desarrollo procesos pedagógicos y creativos a partir de la fotografía experimental. Los nombres de hace dos años me han acompañado a comunidades indígenas, indígenas y a de la defensa de sus derechos. El día de hoy les voy a presentar tres fotografías realizadas en el río de Chitayá. El río de Chitayá es un río importante en el Pacífico colombiano y aproximadamente hace 21 años se dio un ecocidio por parte de una empresa española llamada Monterosa. Lastimosamente, esta hidroeléctrica abrió sus compuertas y derramó 500.000 litros cúbicos de lodos podridos al río. Esto generó que los peces en el mundo murieran y que los cultivos comenzaran a ser infectos. Además, causó muchas afectaciones a la seguridad. En este momento, es falta de espera de que el Ministerio de Medio Ambiente y el Gobierno colombiano le den una solución a las autoridades. Agradezco aún la oportunidad de visibilizar este río tan importante para la región del Pacífico y por esto y para nuestro país. Eh, okay, so yeah, I'm going to now show the images. Hola, ah, sorry, sorry. Uy. Today I can make it to the screen. 
This is the river of Pachinko. Mm -hmm. And this is our, our last compañera. Hola a todos y todas. Mi nombre es Marta Nunca. Soy activista ambiental y formo parte del movimiento de acción climática y al respecto de Bogotá. Mi trabajo fotográfico se centra principalmente en la documentación y el registro de la movilización y la protección social en Colombia. Sin embargo, el día de hoy les traigo una serie de fotografías que salen de las calles de las ciudades y nos transportan a una terreno. Una de las zonas más bloqueadas por el conflicto armado colombiano. Traigo colación este trabajo porque nos dimos cuenta que definitivamente no podemos hablar de justicia climática sin hablar de paz en nuestro país. Estas fotos fueron tomadas el año pasado en el marco de la entrega del informe final de la Comisión de la Verdad, en el cual se declara por primera vez a la naturaleza como una víctima más del conflicto armado colombiano. El río Magdalena y sus pescadores son los protagonistas de estas fotografías. Y el año pasado, en todo este recorrido de la ruta por la verdad, eh, distintos pescadores de diferentes municipios que recorren el río, eh, que rodean el río en la ruta gigantesca Atacaya, que es la herramienta artesanal con la cual las comunidades solían pescar. Está elaborada con técnicas especiales de trabajo no afecta a la fauna y con la falta de no sufren tanto a la hora de ser infectados. También era una técnica con la que trataban de las comunidades sobre los territorios continentales, porque la unidad de la gente se perdió y que se ha perdido y que a poco se usa por el tema del conflicto armado, por la contaminación de los ríos en medio de la tierra, por la sangre que eh, pasó por las aguas de los ríos. E incluso con la de la misma pesca industrial. En esta elaboración de esta gigantesca red el año pasado por los pescadores fue un acto de memoria simbólica de construcción de tejido colectivo y de reivindicación del río Magdalena. Y por último, les quiero traer un fragmento de una obra de teatro que me gusta muchísimo, que se llama El Río de la Red. Si el río hablara, hablaría de las y los desaparecidos, de las masacres, de las muertes violentas. Hablaría de las madres que aún hoy siguen buscando los cuerpos de sus hijas y de sus hijos. Si el río hablara, hablaría de la violencia, de lo que hicieron los paramilitares al convertir a los ríos en las tumbas de este país. Si el río Mandarín hablara, probablemente gritaría que por su causa bajara los cuerpos de algunos de los 60.630 desaparecidos. En Colombia. Estas fotos son un homenaje no solo al río Magdalena, sino también a los ríos de mi país que se convirtieron en escenarios de muerte, porque nunca olvidemos que en un momento fueron también fuentes de vida y que todavía pueden serlos. Eh, nuestro canto y nuestro grito por la vida debe ser un grito por la paz. Agradezco muchísimo a Laura, a Elena y a Onda. Eh, por esta oportunidad de compartir nuestro trabajo y a todos ustedes y todas ustedes por escuchar esta historia. Hola a todos y todas. Hola a todos y todas. Mi nombre es Nata. I'm just going to see if I can um, make the screen larger so you can see. No. no. <laughs> so, sorry, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, one sec, one sec.
It's a fishing net. Should we go through the images again quickly? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys. Are these going to be a permanent collection? Uh, no, they're not. Uh, they were only for this uh, exhibition this moment. Yeah. Yeah. Muchas gracias. Um, one second, so I'm just gonna stop sharing the screen. Um, so. Bueno, muchas gracias. And if I'm not mistaken, Alejandra y, y, y Miller Juana, no sé si quieran de pronto decir algo. Eh, no sé si me están escuchando, pero pues si quieren decir algo eh, más de su trabajo, estamos súper estamos dispuestas a, a escucharlas. Eh, Alejandra says, thanks for sharing. Gracias a ti, Alejandra. Y bueno, si quieren decir algo, me avisan y o oh, no sé. <laughs> pero muchísimas gracias por compartir. Soy a dar was, ¿verdad? Three collectives in, in, in Colombia showing photography as well as a means of resistance. And okay, so I think now, after maybe a very, and a little dog saying hi to um, maybe after a short break, we can we can move on to uh, the pace ups. See? See? So we're going to have a brief break and then we're going to actually go and do it ourselves. We're going to go to the street and we're also going to talk about the maybe possibility of doing a communal mural mm -hmm. here in Brighton if people feel inspired after this talk mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to make something here as well that we can share with the movements in Mexico and, and Colombia. So maybe we'll take five. Yeah. Are people happy to do that? Have a cup of tea, go to the toilet, have a break. Mm -hmm. All right. Bueno, muchas gracias. Vamos a, ya, vamos a esta parte, pero después seguimos hablando. Pero les doy muchas gracias a todas y a todos por compartir con nosotros. Y, y cuando hagamos el, el mural acá en Inglaterra.